Hello everybody, I'm Roxy, this is Rogan Vieth, and today I bring you the momentous, the historic introduction of the TBR jar. This jar is huge. The reason behind it is that this used to be an actual TBR jar where I would put a hundred titles and then immediately lose interest in reading them. My moods change too quickly to pretend to select a number of books to read throughout a large span of time. I think a month is very doable and still I depart from my TBR and I'm comfortable with that. I do not own any tinier jars than this, so this is the jar we are working with. This is how this will work. If you see, there are papers of different colors here, and it's because the papers in green are books that I definitely need to get to because they are either buddy reads, or I need to review for the podcast in Spanish, or I need to read for Invisible Cities, which are my high priority projects this year. Then the blue ones are the ones that are actually on my TBR for that given month. And the pink ones, they, they are not pink, they are orange. The neon orange ones are just like a random list assortment in case I finish all my TBR for that month and I don't know what to pick up. You know, say, oh, I don't know what I want to read next. Okay, let's see what I have. That sort of thing. I'm going to be reevaluating what papers stay of the books that I don't get to each month, every month, basically, to see if they stay in the jar or I take them out because I don't feel like reading them anymore. So I like that system. I think it fits well with my personality. I might depart from what is in the jar. There is no guarantee. I am not going to force myself to read things that I really don't feel like reading unless it's for the podcast, for example. Which, you know, it sucks when you have to read something you hate, but it makes for the most entertaining reviews. In any case, that is how it's going to work. It's like a game. I do it for my own pleasure and also because I think it will be good content. So hopefully you'll enjoy it. And that is the content of this video. So let's get on with it. Let's start with the only book that is not in the jar and that is Kafka on the Shore by Haruki Murakami. I am so excited to read this. This is translated I guess by Jay Rubin, who's his translator, right? No, actually by Philip Gabriel, who's his other really famous translator. Okay, great. I don't remember what this is about. I have heard it described simultaneously as the worst book they've ever read and the best book I've ever read by people whose opinion I really trust. So yeah, for me, jury's out on whether I like Murakami's fiction. I love his nonfiction though, so I'm willing to give a couple of his books a try. This however is not in the jar because I have to check the dates but I might have to start it at the end of December in order to be comfortably done with it by the time I have to record the podcast. Then the other book we're going to review for the podcast that at the same time is for the Invisible City project for the country of Argentina is Little Eyes by Samantha Schwevelin. I have no idea why they changed the title. The creatures that this book describes, which are kind of like evil Care Bears, I think. Have you seen that Simpsons episode where they have like Care Bears lookalike that go evil? I think that this is kind of it. They are called Kentuckys, right, in the book in English, but for some reason they've changed the title. Anyways, that is what this book is about. It's a short novel. I've heard it's not as good as Fever Dream, which you know, too bad. But I'm excited to revisit Shrebelin and to review that. And then I have a body read, which is Moon Tiger by Penelope Lively. How beautiful is this edition? And it was so cheap too, because I got it through Better World Books, which is my main provider of books in English that I don't buy here in Santiago, of course. I haven't read any Penelope Lively. This is my first one. And I know it's about a dying writer looking back at his life. So I'm very excited and I'm even more excited to be body reading this with Amelia Reeds because we have the best conversations. Yes. Oh, by the way, Murakami is going to count for my Invisible Cities project for Japan. It is very low hanging fruit considering that I do read a fair amount of Japanese literature because I have to read the Murakami. I don't want to put extra pressure on myself to read something else. I'm trying to combine as many things as I can. For Morocco, which is the last country, I went 
through hell to find this book. There is another author that I really want to check out that is translated into Spanish, but I can't find his books for the life of me. And this one, they had it at one very specific bookstore. It's a very short book length essay by Tahar Ben Jaloun. It is in Spanish, but the translation in English would be The Frightening Islam. I don't know if that is the actual title. I will look it up, put it down below. But yeah, I'm very interested in reading this. I think it has to do with the perceptions, specifically French people have of it, but you know, it goes into more global context. I think it's framed as a conversation with his child. Now, the ones that are for the Gilmore Girls Challenge. Amy Tan's The Joy Luck Club, which I know is about mother-daughter relationships, and it's very short, but it's still a multi-generational kind of tale. Very excited. My first Amy Tan, but I do own a writing memoir by her. Then there is The Remains of the Day by Kazuo Ishiguro, which I know is about memory and a butler who's looking back in his life and he's very stoic. I think this might be the one that's closest to the artist of the floating world, which is the only thing by Ishiguro that I've loved. I haven't returned to The Unconsoled yet, so that might change. Again, you're still out, but I adored An Artist of the Floating World. I thought that was really, really strong, and I think that might be closest to that, so I'm very excited about it. And the Final book for that first section of the Gilmore Girls Challenge, The House of Mirth by Edith Wharton. I love this Penguin Deluxe edition. It has three novels of New York, The Custom of the Country and The Age of Innocence, apart from The House of Mirth. I read The Age of Innocence and I didn't completely adore it, but I did really enjoy it and I love Edith Wharton. I love her nonfiction. And then books that are all from the few favorite things challenge, which is, you know, the freer one. I'm proud about how much I've stuck to that TBR. I have uh, Best American Travel Writing edited by Bill Bryson. I have The Colossus of New York by Colson Whitehead. I almost picked this up in December, but I decided because I have so much stuff going on in December, then it's fine to just delay gratification. It will only make me more eager to read this. And these are several essays that I think take form of a bit of walking tours through New York. Then I have Bird by Bird by Alan. Lamont, some instructions on writing a life, memoir on writing, and it's also advice for aspiring writers, so I'm also very excited. Walden in this beautiful, cute little edition of uh, Macmillan. I am finally ready mentally, spiritually to get to this. And an anthology of uh, short stories by Everyman's Pocket Classics. I love Everyman. I love their editions. I love their selections. I just love them. Stories of art and artists. Finally, one that is not for any challenge, except that I do want to read at least one poetry collection and or play every single month. I have Feminine Gospels by Carol Ann Duffy. Carol Ann Duffy is one of my favorite poets. Yep. That was it for the books in green and blue. Now onto the books in red. For those in no particular order, because that is kind of the point of the TBR jar, we have Norse mythology, Neil Gaiman's take on Norse myths, of which I know virtually nothing. I mean, I know some things, but not a lot. So I think that would be a good introduction. Uh, Stella Fitzgerald by Therese or Therese Ann Fowler which is a historical fiction novelization of Zelda Fitzgerald's life. Very interested. I hope this is well written because it's kind of the book that I would be interested in because of the subject, but then the writing would be disappointing. So I hope it's good. I have Canary Row by John Steinbeck. I do want to read every single story here. These are all his short novels. I've only read Of My Son Man and really love that one. I also have The Etymologicon by Mark Forsyth. Its subtitle is A Circular Stroll Through the Hidden Connections of the English Language. He was the author of A Brief History of Drunkenness or A Short History of Drunkenness. I always say that wrong. In any case, I really, really appreciated that book. I thought it was really, really strong and I love the humor in it. And so I'm looking forward to dipping into his more language-oriented books. Then I have a reread. I would love to reread Slouching Towards Bethlehem. I also have Where I Was From by Joan Didion, which I also really, really want to read. I don't know which one I want to do first. All I know is I need to read Slouching Towards Bethlehem. The complete short stories of Virginia Woolf, I've read several of these here, but I think if I would read this cover to cover, I would reread 
the ones that I've already read because they are that good. Then I have a Spanish translation of, I don't know if this is the book in English. Again, as always, it will be linked down below, not linked, just written down down below so you can check it out and Google it. This is Patrick Mondiano's Coffee of Lost Youth or The Coffee House of Lost Youth. Very curious to see what this is. It's supposed to be like very bohemian and sad and reflective. It's also very short. That is the price in Chilean pesos. These are sci-fi short stories by Chilean author Hugo Correa, who I've never read before, but I'm very interested. Plus I've been craving some like quality sci-fi. I am still not ready to commit to a full length novel. I think short stories might be the way to go. If you know me, this will be no news to you. I forgot to mention one book, Considered the Lobster by David Foster Wallace, which is an essay collection I'm really looking forward to reading. It's just that it's in a box and the box is under other boxes. Unless I actually have to read it at that moment, I am not getting that shit out of there. So yeah, back to studio. <laughs> and finally, I have another short story collection. This is Roberto Bolaño's first short story collection, Llamadas Telefonicas. I've only read the first 200 pages of Savage Detectives, which I thought was derivative and boring. Even though I read it at a time where I could appreciate lonely, self-reflective, kind of mopey authors, even then, I couldn't get into that. So there you go. This is me giving Bolaño a second chance and if I like it, I may put 2666 on my to be read list. Then maybe eventually I would give the Savage Detectives a second chance, but not likely. So that is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you're excited about this type of format. I have a lot of projects going. Check the links down below to all the announcements that you might have missed. And do you like my jar? Do you like it? I think it's pretty. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe and comment. Have you read any of these books? Do you want to read any of these books? Do you recommend any in particular? And or what do you plan on reading in January? And that's it. See you next time. Oh, also uh, subscribe and follow me on other social media. Bye.